what causes us to self-isolate after a toxic relationship with a narcissist? What is it about going through this experience that causes us to want to be alone or need it? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today at queenbeing.com. So let's get started. Recently, I asked you to let me know what you wanted me to talk about in videos. So today, we're going to start with a question from Ed, one of my YouTube viewers, who would like to know, why do you think we self-isolate after narcissistic abuse? I think it's self-protection, but hopefully a coping mechanism I can overcome. I have no problem with criticism, and I'm told by those I associate with that my judgment is okay. I just wanted an opinion. A lot of people don't realize that we do sort of withdraw from society and isolate ourselves after a toxic relationship for similar reasons to why we do it inside of a toxic relationship. It starts off during the relationship where the person we're dealing with, the narcissist or toxic person, wants full control of our time and our energy. And one of the things they do to get that is to push other people away from us, whether they do this directly or indirectly. In some cases, they're going to push people away by simply being jerks to those people, making it hard for those people to be around, that kind of stuff. In other cases, they're going to invent a drama with those people in order to cause you to want to pull away, or they're going to punish you each time you spend time with those people because they want your attention and time and you've wasted it, wasted it on those other people. And in some cases, you isolate yourself during the relationship because you can't put up with all of the narcissist BS and punishments and drama that goes along with you spending time with other people. It's interesting because the narcissist becomes so charming and likable at the beginning of a relationship and often continues that throughout the relationship with other people, but only other people who don't support you against them. Do you understand what I mean? It's interesting because they use this ability to be charming to kind of throw people off and let people think you're the crazy one and they're the one who, you know, is the victim of, of the relationship. They slowly but surely push you into isolation, like we mentioned, and then they play games with your head until you kind of lose it, kind of get a little unhinged, so to speak. That's about the time that you look around and you notice there's no support for you. You're the person who needs the support, and yet the narcissist somehow has managed to get everyone on their side, or there's just no one because they've all been pushed away. So once you do get out, your mind and your body and your spirit and your soul and all the things, all the parts of yourself are just sort of reeling. They don't even know which way is up. So you find yourself kind of in a difficult spot because even though you may have once been a social butterfly, now you kind of forget how to talk to people, or if you're an empath, you might feel overwhelmed by the constant energy of being around other people, the energy that it takes you to be around them in a comfortable way. I have found that I need at least an hour a day by myself in order to sort of recharge, especially if I've been around a lot of people. I actually did a video about this in the past, and I'm going to share with you a very specific clip that I think will be helpful for you in this moment. Take a look. Why exactly do survivors of narcissistic abuse have so much trouble feeling really connected to other people? Why do we so often find that we feel the need to be alone after any sort of social interaction? I always feel like I need to recharge. Why is it that we feel like the idea of certain types of interaction are so overwhelming that we become paralyzed and we just kind of hide inside the little cocoons we've created for ourselves? Well, we're going to start answering those questions by looking at our situation from an intellectual standpoint, okay? So let's start with taking away all the emotional aspects involved. In this case, we're involved in a pretty uncomfortable place. We are dealing with a narcissist and in some ways we are taught that everything we think and believe and feel and do and say all wrong or at the very least we are consistently invalidated. No one validates us and we start to believe the lies that narcissists tell us about ourselves. And in most cases, these situations are created without our consent, whether we've been fooled into becoming enmeshed with them or we were born into them. Now, here's the thing. When you go through this stuff, you're going to feel abandoned. You're going to feel lonely sometimes, but somehow you want to be alone all the time. It's an understatement to call it overwhelming, but if we're being honest with ourselves, we are almost in a suspended state. Whether we're still stuck in the toxic relationship or we've moved on and now we're going through narcissistic abuse recovery. But as we desperately seek closure, we have to accept the truth of what we've really experienced here. And unfortunately, that's a lot more complicated than it sounds. Obviously, you're on the right path, my friend, because you're here right now and you're watching this video. Since the narcissist is a walking mess, 
filled with confusion, anger, love bombing, and all that abuse cycle spinning stuff. Well, you've been seduced into becoming a source of narcissistic supply, or maybe you were groomed to be one by a parent or other authority figure in your life. For example, let's say the narcissist in your life is your spouse or your partner, and if you're being honest, you were likely seduced with promises of having someone on your side or soulmate or whatever your version of that was. But ultimately, you were brought in thinking you were getting a sweet deal. You were going to find your your prince charming or your princess awesome or whatever. But if it was your parent or your parental figure, then it probably looked more like, well, I'm the only person who really loves you, so you better do exactly what I want or you're going to risk being completely abandoned in the world. In either case, it looks like if you don't do what I want, you're going to be alone. And the narcissist knows instinctively that everyone is secretly afraid on some level of ending up completely alone and unloved in the world. And that's true whether we admit it or not. Interestingly though, the narcissist themselves, they're also incredibly afraid of that. And that's why you don't very often see a narcissist who stays single for very long. Inevitably, they grab hold of one branch before they let go of the last one. And just to avoid confusion here, what I mean is that most narcissists will secure a new supply before letting you go. And honestly, they will often run parallel relationships in order to avoid being alone. That's part of the reason you might be dealing with jealousy in a relationship with a narcissist, even if you don't realize it at the time. In the case of a romantic situation, maybe your narcissist exhibits extreme jealousy when other potential suitors are near or are involved in your life. Whether you'd really go there or not really isn't an issue for the narcissist, because if the narcissist feels threatened by someone, their jealousy comes screaming out. But a lot of times, this is actually just projection of their own indiscretions onto you. As in, the narcissist is cheating on you or considering it, so then they become hypervigilant. Now, on the flip side of this, the narcissist will scream at you. They will tell you you're insane or otherwise invalidate you, even if you just ask a single question about their dealings with potential suitors. So you end up dealing with the sickening feelings of betrayal alone. And you secretly wonder if maybe... The narcissist is right, and really, you are really crazy. Just a little hint for you, you're probably not. Fact is that narcissists will call you crazy, jealous, etc. They'll say you're making up stuff in your head. You know the drill. Just remember that listening to your gut means tuning in to your intuition, into your divine self and your divine connection to your higher power or the universe. So don't ignore it and trust yourself when you feel something strongly. So why does this make you want to be alone all the time anyway? Well, it starts with the fact that you're likely an empath. Most of the time, when you tend to attract narcissists, you have the ability to really feel what everyone around you feels. And this is especially true with someone you love and or spend a lot of time with. So when the narcissist is overwhelming you with the pressure of being responsible for their emotions, you probably find yourself forever spinning, always trying to fix them. And my friend, it is exhausting. But then while you're still in it, you probably find yourself sort of saving up your energy. You don't really want to talk to people about anything serious because you quite literally cannot handle one more straw on that proverbial camel's back. So you start to isolate yourself in order to recharge between abuse sessions with the narcissist. And once you're out of there, you might just continue to isolate, either out of habit or out of a need to try and protect yourself from more narcissists in the world, or both. And even though you feel lonely sometimes, you might choose to remain alone just because it's more peaceful that way. But who could blame you? The truth is, though, that you'll eventually get to the point where you do want to change the situation. And now you realize that you've forgotten how to even be in a relationship. You might find that you even prefer to avoid any intimate connections in order to protect your heart. And this, my friend, can be the case even if your narcissist was your parent. Being with a narcissist tends to not only cause you to distrust yourself, but also the entire world around you. And when you do try to change the situation, you might feel paralyzed and overwhelmed. Do you see what I mean? You have to admit to yourself that you are or were in a codependent relationship with a toxic narcissist. You must acknowledge that you were mentally and emotionally abused and manipulated, and then you have to begin to understand why it happened. And eventually, while you did play a role in the relationship and you do need to take responsibility for that, you're gonna have to realize that it really isn't your fault. You really did get pulled into this stuff under false pretenses, and you do have the option and the right to change this whole deal. And yes, This even applies when we're talking about a parent or another family member. You, my friend, you have the right to feel peace. You have the right to feel loved. You have the right to determine who you are, the opportunity to decide what happens from here on out. And my friend, you have the responsibility to change your life for the better, not just for yourself, but for the people that you love who actually depend on you. Remember this, while a certain amount of time of kind of isolating yourself 
is okay and acceptable and perfectly normal. Even if you take a few weeks or a couple months, that's okay. But eventually you're going to want to get back out there. Make yourself get back out there because you don't want to become somebody who can't leave the house. And I know this is ironic at this time in history for me to tell you this. So let me just put it to you like this. Connect with people in whatever way you're able to do that in your own time, in your own life. Make sure that you consider reaching out for support to a therapist or a coach or anyone who is able to support you during this time, whether it's a friend or family member or someone professional that you find online. Many of us do sessions on the phone, so there's that option. It helps to reach out to people who understand where you are, where you're coming from, and that's why talking to a coach or joining a free support group online is a really great way to start to connect to people again right now, especially when we're going through this whole quarantine thing. I know we're all supposed to be self-isolating right now, but there are different levels of that. And even if you're not able to get out of the house, there are ways you can connect with people. Well, this brings me to the question of the day. And the question of the day is, have you self-isolated before and are you still doing it now? What did you do to stop? Share your thoughts, share your ideas, share your experiences in the comment section below and let's talk about it.